Hello, 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 everybody. I am now recording. Oh, yeah. Let me get this song on, y'all, and I'm going to pull my guest in. Start the video. Yeah. Black lights and lava lamps. Black lights and lava land, that's just where my mind be at most of the time. Black lights and lava land, that's just where my mind be at most of the time. I got 16 bars in the pink cars with the damn illustration, don't need no cars. Hello, sir. Cars. Got a bit of you and the stars, and chilling on one of the cars, and I'm so good at all. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. And hey, man, it's so lonely up here. I, I wish one day y'all would come with us. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, sir? Man, chilling on it, man. I had to come through, man. It's been long overdue, you know what I'm saying? Word up. Well, first of all, to everybody else out there, welcome back to Gavin with the Governor. I'm your boy, Jay Troni, as Governor of the Galaxy. And we're going to bring this interview back around my hometown. Without further ado, brother, tell them who you are, where you're from, and what it's about, brother. Man, I'm AT. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, with your boy AT, Y A B O Y A T. I'm right here in North Texas, about an hour north of Dallas. You know, it's our, our area, this our stomping grounds, but we are not limited to where we are. Um, man, we, we uh, um, that's one thing I learned from you, man. I tell you, man, it's not just the worldwide thing. You're the governor of the galaxy, you know. That, that just limits who, who we are, who you are. You know, it's just so much larger than life, so much larger than what it is. But, uh, man, I'm a, a music producer, engineer. Um, man, just a, a student of everything entertainment related. I'm a student of everything uh, entrepreneurial related. I work on uh, flipping houses, doing that a little bit. And uh, man, just really just uh, uh, understanding how to tie everything together. Everything is, is so connected, um, you know, from the music to, you know, any type of investments and entrepreneurs hey man it, it's all connected together you know and that's what it is man and um, yes, that, that's a little bit about me right there <laughs> okay okay good that's a good start man so at so tell us about you know of course we connected beginning with the music right so let so let's touch on the music tell, tell us your background tell us your story where where this began your love for music began and, and, and what and what has it brought to your life and where do you want it to go you know, man, I think it's, it's it's similar to you know some of yours. You know, I man, my my pops, you know, he uh staying in a in a music group, and um, you know, man, he uh, always had instruments in the house. I always was associated with um, recording studios and just had that you know in me from from birth. Uh, my dad, you know, I was born in Oklahoma City. He had a group up there in Oklahoma City. That's the only reason why I was I was born up there because he was living up there pursuing you know a gospel music career. And, um, you know, my dad actually, he told me this. I, I didn't even say, mention this to you. He said that, uh, you know, I guess I mean, your dad had like a little group and stuff that uh, he, he, during the 80s and stuff, you know, man, he said he, he went out and sang a couple of gigs with them one time, you know, man. On, wow. on, he wow. went to Grace. And it's crazy, man. He told me that, man, just the other day, man, um, you know, uh, when, when your dad had passed and he, he shared that with me. Uh, but man, it, it it was pretty amazing. But man, as far as that, man, growing going to high school, and um, you know, man, we used to have like uh, man, little freestyle Friday battles and stuff, and and we do make beats with pencils and pens on the desk and everything like that. Yeah. And man. um, and, and really, man, me and your uh your kin folk, um, you know, Brandon Yeezy, you know, we we kind of just. We're from the same lineage of of uh, man, just doing some of the music. Some of the uh, cats around here that influenced us growing up. Of course, my dad, man, the nine hundred three players. Um, you know, Jim G and Jay Sweet, man, my cousin Bodie, and some of the stuff that man they did. Man, it was always an, an influence from there, and wanted to be uh, a part of something. Um, you know, th that had a generation, that had a a particular 
uh, uh, era and had a, a, a for a moment in time a, a huge influence on people. I mean, I wanted to be a part of that, you know, and and, and that's that's what it was, man. Just really just to get people motivated and and inspired by the things that you know that I was doing, you know, and and that's where it kind of started from right there. Yeah, man. You know, and then like. Um... Your beats speak for themselves, brother. Your beats speak for themselves. You know, since I moved back to Texas, man, we we got we got quite a few records under our belt, and I know we're gonna have more, man. You know, a at has a de a definitely a unique sound, even like you know from the from the actual beat to like engineering, you you have your own lane. You have your own lane, and uh, what well, what would you say contributed to that? I think for me being a, a perfectionist and almost OCD in it, in the studio, I think, of course, man, a, a lot of influence listen to different, you know, producers, you know, along the way and just wanting to replicate some of the different sounds that I would hear, but, you know, mixing in with my own style and my own, um, you know, knowledge of what music is. I look at music the way I look at math because I always like math. And so when you think about music, and, and you know this, I mean, you, you, you've went to music school, and a lot of cats is, that's in the game, they don't understand theory. They don't understand, you know, what's behind it. And I'm not even as advanced as, as you when it comes to just the, the formal knowledge that I got. But, man, just on screen, I look at it as in, in math and in colors. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, if you have, you know, your 4-4 your four, four time, you know, you got so many – you know, notes you can get inside of this this bar right here. I right, what's the combination that we can do it? All right, so I want to have you know five, uh, uh, seven, eight different words inside this bar right here. What's the combination of, of of pauses and quarter notes, eighth notes that we can all put in here to make this fit and make it sonically feel good? Right. And and I look at it like that as a a math problem, you know. And so whenever I'm doing delays. Or if I'm putting an effect on there, I'm like, okay, what what is this timing on this? You know, what what am, what am I have to divide this tempo with in order to make this work? And, and I'm a numbers dude, and it and it just kind of just goes into that world of 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 math for me, just doing the music, and and I just I, I enjoy the the uh, the puzzle in it. I enjoy the the it, it's what it is. It's a puzzle. I solve Rubik's cubes a lot of times just because I enjoy that. That, that the challenge right there. Right. That's right. what I, I like about the music right there. And that's what, you know, a lot of times it keeps me from me, being able to to finish certain things because I'm always trying to do it a, a perfect way. Like, I know it ain't good enough yet. <laughs> I just had that conversation with another friend of mine that's also a producer. And it's like, it's good for you cats. It's good. Like everything that you got that that's in, when you're intense like that is a blessing and a curse all at once. And I always tell a lot of a lot of people that don't know that haven't been around a lot of different musicians, especially the brainiac ones. It's always got somebody in their corner that that, that can tell them stop, because yeah. you, you, know, you always are look one that thing that you can always get better. And you, you know, and and for put, for the sake of putting out music, sometimes you got you got to either if you don't trust yourself, you got to have somebody around you be like, all right, put that shit out. I mean, sure, even sure. in my career, I've had to do it too. Cause you know I, I'm a I hoard all these records, hoard all these records, and then and then uh, eventually somebody sat me down and was like, "No, nah, cut the shit, dog. put put the record, yeah. put the record out, yeah. bro. Do yeah. all that energy for you to make it better. Put into the next one. You know, yeah. just, uh, let it evolve. Let, you know, let the people and let the people see your journey. But you know, also what's interesting about you, man, even before we met, and what I've heard about you out here is um the unity thing. And I think it's important for us to talk about the unity of, of when, where you started with it and where it's needed now. Like one thing I do, I remember seeing an album cover where half of your uh, letter jacket was Dennis and half of it was Sherman. Now, now to me, that, that, that's a unity thing because we both grew up in this area knowing that cats will fight just because they're not from the same block or the same city. So tell me about that. Tell me about, you know, how that, in your mind, how the unity was then and, and what it needs now. Man, when I was growing up, I went to school in Denison. And, and for everybody's out there, of course, Sherman Denison, man, people that's from here, they know. But, man, just to give you a little insight on it, Sherman Denison is the longest running rivalry in the state of Texas. Um, every year we got a thing called a Battle of the Axe. And it's a football game that happens between the two teams. And 
whoever wins the game gets to hold the axe. And, you know, for years, man, it was, it was always some uh, contention between the two towns, right? And, and, you know, still to this day, it's, it's kind of more fun. But, you know, man, during the time, what was going on, man, my cousin, my cousin Andre, uh, Andre Jackson died in 1994. And and I was going to Sherman schools at the time. I went to Sherman schools. I kind of went to Denison schools in, in Sherman. So I bounced back and forth, man, through, um, you know, from <clears throat> first grade, I went to Denison. Second and third, I went to Sherman. I went all the way to Sherman to about the, the seventh grade. Then I went to Denison. So, you know, man, I was cool with everybody from both sides, man. Got to high school. I went to Sherman High School for my ninth and tenth grade. Uh, I finished in Denison, you know, in my 11th and 12th grade year. And I just remember, man, a lot of kids, man, I was cool with, um, you know, in school growing up, it, it was a, a somewhat of a, a disconnect between us because, man, they said, ah, oh, you and Dennis, and you a traitor now, and this and that. And, and man, I, it was kind of uncomfortable for me because even it was it was a point in time where I had to kind of just choose, like, oh, who am I going to roll with? And and I remember that, you know, no, you know, kind of just ostracizing, you know, man, like these are my boys over here too, you know what I'm saying? And, and they kind of couldn't be cool with me. And then if I try to be cool with the people over there, my, my friends and Dennis and would, you know, treat me a certain type of way. So, you know, that was kind of the root of me, like wanting to, like, man, I want to work with everybody. You know, I want to be able to do it, man. Uh, Cats and Dennis and that make music, man. People in Sherman didn't want to listen to it. Caps in Sherman that make music. People in Denison wasn't fooling with it. So I wanted to do something to to unite, unite, unite. I wanted to unite that. You know what I'm unite saying? Unite that hoe. Unite that shit, dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And um, man, I remember my boy uh, Leland, uh, Leland Guest, man. I, I brought his leather jacket, you know, for the Sherman side to to do that album cover. And one of my cousins, uh, Alfred Douglas, I used his leather jacket because, man, I actually let some chick, you know, um, borrow my leather jacket and went on a date one time and never got jacked back, never seen a girl ever again. And so my leather jacket just missed me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, man, um, man, uh, a nonstop graphics in Dallas did that for me and made that vision come to, to life perfectly, man, because even on the little stuff in the background, you'll see, like, a, a sign of East Street. Uh, and you'll see Munson Park. You know, this is like where. Wow, yeah, like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't look at it that close, but yeah, that's yeah, fly. yeah. That's yeah, man. All the details and stuff is all in there, man. And so, man, it, it just was representation not only of, uh, man, what I wanted for for the town, but um, you know, but even for my own, you know, personal life and and, and everybody to be at a place where, man, we can work together, we come together, and, and man, I talked to. Uh, Pat Pat, and I'm not sure if you had him on here before, but Pat man, Pat Pat told me like, man, before I did that, it wasn't a lot of artists working with each other from both, both sides. sides. Yeah. And now it's it's normal. It's okay, you know. It's not a big it's not a big deal at all. But before then, man, it, it really wasn't, man. I remember going to different shows and stuff, man, and, and cats, you know, wasn't a appreciative of us being at a show in Sherman, you know, because they felt like I was too associated with Denison, you know, and right. um, man, it, it was just a beautiful thing when you fast forward and like, even like the little compilation album and stuff that I did, um, it, it was able to showcase so many people and got both sides listening to music that they probably wouldn't listen to, you know, if, oh shoot, Joe Wayne's on a song with Bodie, so I guess we can, you know, listen to this whole song, you know, since they all on the song together, you know, right? And, and it it allowed for that, um, you know, that that unit, man. What well, I can't even remember my words. They I, they unified. A, well, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> Play a point blank. It allowed for it. you. Put you pulled it together, man. And you know what? And at the end of the day, I salute you for being one of the forefronts of that because I do see all of them working together. Now, um, there's one last question with this music and uh, what what do you want with your music now? Like where you're at now with everything that you've been through, what are the things that you still feel you need to accomplish or are you content? You know, man, when I look at, you know, for the, the time of influencing that generation of people, right? You know, a lot of people were looking like, well, shoot, man, you know, are you still going to do this? Uh, man, and other people come to me, man, hey, man, we need to go do some more stuff or whatever. Like, man, I love music. I love the music and everything like that. And and I think the drive is different, you know, at least it was for me, at different areas in my life. 
And so, you know, now I know that drive is probably not as, as, as strong as it was, you know, in my 20s. But I look at, you know, the people that was influenced. I looked at, uh, you know, even like different resurgence of people, you know, picking up stuff on Spotify and everything else that, that's been re-released. You know, man, for me, that's that's my Grammy. That's my, you know, uh, awards just to, for people to still remember and still have a, a man. This is associated with an era and a time of my life. And I go back and say, man, this is, um, you know, I, I enjoy this. I'm like, man, that's that's my Grammys and stuff like that. Am I going to continue to make music? Yeah, man, I got the itch and I still, you know, want to do some stuff. I'll make it happen. Um, but at the same time, like I said, it's, I, I feel like I've, I've, I've been fulfilled. Uh, do I want to uh, be at a new place where I can uh, manage people more or I can just you know kind of get a game more I know my son's been doing a lot like yeah man I want to be in a position where I can hey man let me just let me push you and give you some knowledge you know what I'm saying let me take 50 of y'all y'all bring me y'all's work or whatever and let's just push it out there that way it's only one of me it's always going to be some dope people coming through um, our our window of, of influence and opportunity a lot of times is, is minimal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people that's, you know, industry, of course, man, you can still have success on, on any level and still be able to do music and still generate numbers at any given time. But for the most part, it's, it's your window right here. Just like a professional athlete. Um, Even the people that we listen to growing up, we don't even necessarily want to hear their new stuff, you know? We, we want to listen to their old stuff, man. Let me hear your old song. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, ESG, go ahead, you know, give us some of that. Old. That's how we are programmed because from the time I was 15 to 25, that's the song that I can go back and recite every single word. You're you know, right. you're right about the music. The music now, like, it'd be some dope music, but it, it probably don't stick as much because, man, that, that side of my, my, my ability to, to retain it. It ain't there like it. I'm not as influential. And, and I remember, you know, our parents and stuff saying, ah, y'all listen to that trash and this and that. So I had to be real conscious of that. You know, even if it was some stuff that I may have not initially kind of just bought into on some new generation stuff, you know, I had to be conscious. I'm like, man, my parents, they did the same thing. And so whenever you start not being receptive to whatever the current trends are, that means that whatever your product that you delivering may not be, as a you know, acceptance to the new generation, they ain't trying it's to fool with you. Know? It's, it's real, man. It it is definitely a transitional point. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're getting up in the years, man. It is. You got to accept it for where it's gonna go. It's gonna go. You can't. There, there is. You got some valid points, man. But you know, to everybody out there, like I can't tell y'all enough. When he does decide, you know, since I've been here, when he does decide to get in that studio, it ain't no joke. Like, literally today when he said, let's do this interview, he might not even know that at midnight I'm going to drop our new record. So his timing is immaculate because the first record that we worked on, when I got back into town, he's like, I got something for you. And, and, and the thing about him that, that, you know, as an artist, when you work with a producer, you want a producer to really study you. You don't want the producer to tell you what they want you to sound like. You want the producer to be like, I did this for you. You know, that, that's, that's the difference of, of when you study great producers. Like when I've studied Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam and, and, and Quincy Jones and, you know, and even the old, you know, any of these cats knew that they had to kind of put themselves in the artist's mind with, with a touch of them and mix it together. So nevertheless, he did all this. I say all that to, you know, my first experience of coming back home and, and a cat actually listening to my record before we even spoke and it was like i heard you this is your vibe spot on we took a while to put this record out but it was worth the wait you know what yes. i'm saying and uh so you know at midnight y'all i'm gonna do some shit put it out there black lights and lava lamps jay troni is produced by your boy at you know some wonderful musicians we got involved now hey that was amazing what you did to that though too man that that how you how you took the track to the next level you know, not only just with your your skills and everything on it, just how you could from one location say, "All right, we're gonna take this track around the world, right? We're gonna we're gonna send us around the world, and then we're gonna bring it back. Oh. Listen to this product now, like, oh my goodness, like we do it like that. That that blew my mind in that process, you know. Uh, you know, man, like that's the power of the internet, dog. I tell people all the time, 
because you hear a lot of people, no matter where they're at, say they get no love in their hometown. And, and for me, it's like, okay, that might be true. It might not be true. I, I don't know. But what I do know, no matter where I'm at, I got the world literally in my hands. With yeah. the, so somebody in the world, no matter what level I'm on or, or you know, whatever, is going to want to work with me because people out here want to work. And that, that you don't have that limit anymore. You know, so it's like it's unlimited to what you can do now. As far as anything, not just music, but any business for that matter. I've replicated. That changed my life in other endeavors I have. That whole thing. And, and, and I don't know if I shared it. I think I have before, but man, it changed my life on how I think about even, you know, investments I do in the real estate. Even investments and stuff I do with the music and other people were thinking like, hey, you don't have to do everything, right? Yeah. Because I had that. I was like, oh, man, I got to do everything. I got to, man, mix and master. I got to go. Uh, let me learn how to play the sax on, put the sax solo on. Uh, let me learn how to play the bass on, put the... No, I ain't got to do everything. These people that's out there that's way on dope, but then I am at their individual craft. Yeah. Utilize them. Like, part, on the real estate stuff, I was like, hey. That's a huge part of in business and just leadership, period, is the art of delegation. Yes. Of team, of team ball, playing team ball, and then and, and, and knowing who is best at what position. Nobody yes. wins championships. Nobody gets the bread without a team. That's yep. the, that's the, and that team doesn't have to, nowadays that team don't have to be physically in your face no more. So it's like, what you gonna yep. do with it, you know? And, and, and yo, yep. so, t- so tell people, man, um, other, uh, you're an entrepreneur, what, what other businesses are you involved in? Just give us a brief of some other stuff you're involved in that you wanna tell us about. Uh, right now, well, man, I, I I tell you what, man, and this is still associated with the music, though, man. You know, I've been doing the I just got hit dot com. Um, this is got some Martin Law Firm, which of course that's that's in H Town in Dallas. So a lot of the ads that run, you know, I do some of the music and production and stuff on that. I got the the real estate, man. We've been flipping houses. Um, we're doing our, our first new build right now because we've done just some rehab. We're doing a new build right now. Uh, working on that. Um, and just really just want to learn, you know, so much, man. I've, I've, I've done, um, some, some different, you know, uh, clothing line. Like I, I did some shorts. I was trying to, you know, flip some shorts and stuff on, on that, uh, learning how to just replicate everything that, you know, kind of stuff I didn't learn from you on this music side and replicating it in every other business endeavor that's out there. Um, yeah, you man. know, and it's, and it's, it's, the options are, uh, are endless. It's endless. What it's, it's always some around that you can find ways to to capitalize on. You know, I was gonna get some masks and order some masks and, and and start flipping those. You know what I'm saying? Because man, it's it's fine with the trends. All right, jump on it. You know, and it it, it is a, it's unfortunate, but it's a real hustle to uh, bank off of the pandemic. <laughs> I'm like, somebody doing it? Hey, everybody else doing it? For real. For real. All right, man. So I'm going to wrap this up with the one question I ask everybody on this interview. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, what is the AT legacy? What do you want to leave behind on this earth? Well, first of all, you know, I got six kids and I got a beautiful wife. And, you know, everything that, that we do, you know, we we uh, you make sure that man, we just are creating some dope people, some people that can pass his name and pass this legacy on. Um, and, and it's beautiful. I, I'm glad you asked it because I wanted I wanted to touch on this. I don't know how much time we got left, but one of my new obsessions is Ancestry.com. Yeah. And I, I seen a post from from Ice Cube just now. They talked about kind of you know, and I'm kind of going into subject matter of of, of what today's climate is. But it said, man, the people without uh, you know any of connection to their heritage or where they came from, and and not knowing what their their connection is, it's like a, a tree without no roots. You know, it's like how can it grow, right? I just want to be able to be at a place where, man, we can just stick our foundation so firmly that, man, this tree continues to expand and grow and generate. Man, some dope people off of this, some dope artists, whatever their craft is, whatever they choose to be, know that, hey, man, this is coming off of this branch right here, you know? And, and, and I want that for my, my kids. I want to generate 
uh, uh, inheritance from my children's children, you know, wh whatever that is, you know, I want to be able to, to pass that down to them. Um, you know, if they choose to do music, cool. My daughter loves doing uh, art and she loves doing hair. Man, cool. Man, do this. Take this. Run with it, man. Just be dope people. You know what I'm saying? Continue to, to, to branch us off and, 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 and build from this legacy from what we started, man. I want you to be better than me, you know? Church, church. That's what it is, man. Evolve the legacy. Evolve the, the, the family name. Evolve the musical game. And, and, and shit, man. And we, we, I feel like you are doing that, brother. I really do feel that way, man. Well, and I'm doing glad the, same the world thing. has got to be exposed to you on my show today, man. Tell people how they can get in touch with you so they, they can keep in tune with what you got going. Man, hit me up at your boy AT on Instagram and Twitter, Y-A-B-O-Y-A-T. And, man, you can check out everything that, man, we talking about, man, talking about all type of discussions, man, you know, from today's climate um, and, and music and, and little comedic aspect to it as well. Sometimes we just got to smile through it all, you know, got to give them something to smile yeah. about. Thanks. They gotta let the, the light shine, shine the light. You know what I'm saying? Still real gotta life. let it shine. Real life, real life. Well, blessings, brother. And to the rest of y'all, man, thanks for tuning in again to Gap with the Governor. This is your boy AT. This is Jay Tronius. Love and light. Y'all stay positive and keep it moving, y'all. Yes, sir. Hey, man, and don't forget, man, that uh, uh, black lights and lava lamps coming. Uh, hashtag uh, black lava lamps. Uh, matter a uh, black light it's matter is what it is all of it all of it all <laughs> of it my boy be good famo man yes sir you too boy i appreciate you right on